I mean, I enjoyed everything. Sister Quinn had a vision and she did some research and, and found out about how to put it on here at Breath of Life. Southern had done the play and so we reached out to them and they were so supportive. And as soon as she presented it to the church, it's like everybody just came together as a cohesive unit and we made it happen and it was awesome. So we were calling people into service and to take major responsibilities that maybe they had been looked over or they wouldn't speak up, but we saw some gifts were there. So it kind of brought us all together as one because so often we separate each other. You know, we, it's because of my age, I can't do this or can't do that. And everyone coming together and just watching everyone just learn their parts and do what it took to actually put on a good production was like a great experience. Sometimes we always not out front. Sometimes our part is, you know, minute, but every one of those parts played a part in making the whole scene come together. I could see on their faces, we, we pulled them in. It, it wasn't about they were on the parking lot of Breath of Life. They were actually on Galgotha's hill as Jesus was being crucified. Jesus being crucified. It was, it was like it was happening right in, in front of my eyes. I almost cried. It was emotional and it was really cool. What they had read in the Bible came alive. Reading is one thing, but actually living it out or playing it out or seeing Jesus up on the cross or just knowing that they chose uh, Barabbas instead of Jesus. Would I have chosen Christ? or Barabbas. The love of God really has no age. I felt that it was awesome to be a part of an interactive play. It was like the whole thing, it was really lifelike, telling the story of Jesus and how he rose again from the dead and came to save us. I was super excited that I was a part of the play. Seeing my little sister dancing, I was proud of her. My favorite part was the Last Supper, before Jesus got crucified. Mine was the last part, because that was the only part I really got to see, because I was an angel. Shortly after the end of the play, I had recorded uh, for the church the final scene. And I had played that final scene, I think, for a day straight, uh, likely eight hours straight. When I left the play, I had the recording from inside and it's still in my phone now. So everybody I saw, I said, look, just, just watch this part. Seeing the impact that the play had, um, I guess, on them, it, it, it was a great experience as well, from the crying to the looks of distress. It, it, was a, it was a great experience on either side, I think. My coworker didn't have to see it. All she had to do was hear it to recognize that this was powerful. This was absolutely powerful. I remember a guy in passing said, you know, if you, if you want to get people to join your church, that's the way you do it. As, as we were leaving to come in to, to the church, um, you know, at the last scene and all of that, a lot of the people were just it's like, oh, this is, this is really nice. I'm so glad I came and stuff like that. You heard a lot of that. And even though they weren't talking to me directly, I could hear it. We're hoping this year to do more follow-up projects right after the play to bridge that connection with the community. It's never going to be an individual effort. It's always going to be a group effort with the churches, with the community. Uh, the church really seemed united, and the united cause was to get the story of uh, the resurrection, the death, the resurrection, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to the community and to those who are willing to come and to see it live. No greater love. April 20th. And 21st. See you there.